Hello, hello everyone. Um, still, if you're still getting food, feel free to get, get, get your food and uh, take, take your seat and enjoy your food. As we mentioned, this uh, next session of, of the agenda, we're going to be talking about recruiting poll workers. I know that's a big topic for, uh, for town clerks across, across the state. I'm pleased to be joined today by Julie Hendricks, who comes from Vet the Vote, a terrific national organization working to help veterans uh, become poll workers and connect them to, to all of you. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Julie. All right. Thank you. Uh, as Sean said, my name is Julie Hendricks. I'm the director of operations for We the Veterans and Military Families. Uh, which sponsors the Vet the Vote program. I'm also a Navy veteran and a military spouse. So I'm here today to talk about Vet the Vote. As Sean said, it's a national uh, campaign to recruit veterans and military family members to go and be the next generation of poll workers. So um, our organization in 2022 realized that there was a large shortage of poll workers in the country. And so we were working on ways to help veterans kind of get civically engaged back into their communities. So uh, poll working seemed to be kind of a natural, a natural thing. Um, there were 100,000 people that we were probably going to be short of poll workers in 2022. And our organization helped recruit 63,500. Um, this year, I'm proud to say we have recruited over 140,000 people to sign up in their local jurisdictions. So it's a great program. Um, I'll talk a little bit more. Some people don't think that it might be a kind of a natural fit for this community to go and work the polls, but there are a number of reasons why we have found that it really works. So. If you think about the military, it's an extremely diverse population. People come from the largest cities in America. They come from the smallest kind of rural farm towns. Uh, people are raised with different political be beliefs, different religious beliefs. They come from different cultural backgrounds in the military. And we all come together to focus on one thing, and that's to serve the country. Um, another reason that we make great poll workers is, uh, let me look at my notes here, I'm getting a little nervous. Um, so I can tell you firsthand, when you get out of the service, sometimes you feel like something is missing. You're used to really giving a lot of your heart, a lot of your soul, you're being on a team and you have a mission. And so a lot of times uh, you're missing that when you get out of the service. So when you're able to plug into your local community and continue to give back to your, um, your neighbors, your friends, the people you live with, that's a really important piece for a lot of our veterans and service members. Um, we are also among one of the most trusted groups of Americans. And so when you can go out and say, when you go to your local polls, there's gonna be a lot of veterans and their family members who are there to work the polls, then uh, that builds public confidence that the election system is secure and it's safe and that your vote is going to count. Um, really quickly, I'll just let you know, I was a helicopter pilot in the Navy, so I got to deploy on the USS Enterprise a couple times. Um, the, the helicopter is there to kind of make sure that nothing, if the jets were to get have their worst day, if a pilot was going to eject, we were there to save them. So it's not, if you're a thrill seeker, you weren't necessarily a helicopter pilot, but it did give us a really great view every day of what was going on on the carrier. And so um, there was the 4th of July. I was, it was my first deployment. I was missing home. I wanted to be at the beach, at the barbecue, watching the fireworks. But I was sitting there watching all the jets take off. And um, I was seeing all the people down on the carrier, kind of my teammates. And I thought, wow, like, isn't it amazing that I get to be a part of this little piece of America floating out in the Indian Ocean? Uh, and, and that's why the people are able to celebrate the 4th of July back home. We'll flash forward to about 20, 20 years, not quite. Um, I was in my first poll worker training session in Fairfax County, Virginia. And I was looking around, and I'm not going to lie, it did not feel quite as cool as being on that first deployment <laughs> in the helicopter. <laughs> But I really was sent, like, stuck with a very similar sense of awe that all these people were here giving their time, training to be poll workers so that our friends and our neighbors could do what I think is the most important thing that you can do as an American, and that is to vote. So um, I'm super proud. <laughs> yeah, thank you, clerks. <laughs> um, I'm super, super proud to 
be part of Vet the Vote, and I wanted to thank Secretary Copeland Hansas for having us here today and to start our partnership with the state of Vermont. So, Madam Secretary. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being here with us and for helping us to kick off this, uh, this effort. Uh, we're really happy to be teaming up uh, with Vet the Vote to get the word out about this important job. Um, it's also really special to be able to, to do this event today with all of our town and city clerks uh, who are hard at work today uh, reviewing um, a lot of election procedures and, uh, and many of the issues that they're going to be uh, tackling between now and November. So, Thank you to clerks for being here today for this event. Um, so it takes many people working together to make our elections work. Uh, you, you hear the phrase elections are a team sport and it's really true. Um, our clerks need to have active and involved boards of civil authority. They need to have volunteer poll workers um, and those are community members who, who are critical to making sure that our elections run smoothly in Vermont. Um, today we're focusing on poll workers um, and you know as Julie said it's a great way to give back and participate in the election process. It helps out your clerks, it helps your community um, and it's also really fun to interact with folks uh, who are coming to the polls. Um, voting should be a celebration as we think about our hopes for the future, as we cast our ballots for people who we feel strongly will, will take us where we want to go as a country. Um, and why veterans, right? We respect and honor veterans for stepping up and for putting themselves in harm's way and in very uh, difficult circumstances to defend our democracy and to protect our country. And what better way to offer a continuation of that important service than to invite veterans to come and be a part of helping you run elections. Um, veterans are, uh, are known for, uh, for being very good at following orders and uh, working as a team. Um, and I think that uh, most clerks out there would raise a hand and say, yep, if you can get me some poll workers who are known to follow directions uh, to a T, yes, send them my way. Um, and so as you'll hear from some of our other speakers, um, being a poll worker is, is a crucial service to your community and, uh, and a crucial service to our democracy. Um, so our office is on deck every day, uh, supporting clerks and making sure that we help them uh, get what they need to be able to run secure elections in this state. And um, so I'm really proud to be working with Vet the Vote to bring out some more folks who can come and help you all do the job that you need to do. So before I pass this off to a clerk and a veteran poll worker, um, I, want, uh, I want the remainder of the elections team who just popped in to just stand up and wave in case some of you don't, haven't met all of them. So we've got Lori, we've got Dan, uh, you've seen Sean all day today, where's Mark? Tammy. Uh, Tammy's right here, yep. Mark, Mark is right back here, okay. So thank you. This is a super hardworking team um, and uh, we are here for you. So please uh, please reach out to us or, or chat with us while we're here for lunch. And now, without further ado, I want to uh, introduce town, uh, town? Town, yes. Town clerk, um, Lisa O'Neill from Hartford. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank Vet the Vote and the Secretary of State's office for highlighting the importance of and the need for poll workers. We all struggle a little bit with that. We right now in Hartford have a really hearty list. However, in August when everyone's out on vacation or in March when we have snowbirds, it gets harder. So that even a, a robust list is not enough. We use the clerks and the BCA as the presiding officers, but that's just not enough. Word of mouth is a great way to get poll workers. We have a student volunteer in Hartford who encouraged her parents to become poll workers. I became a poll worker because my mom was one um, prior to me being clerk. And I worked for my predecessor for several years as a poll worker and had a blast. And what is fun about being a poll worker is 
that you get to see people you don't always see, but the more important piece is that the voters get to see people they know and trust, checking them in, directing them, working at the tabulators, and having um, our local veterans and their families uh, support us in that way just builds the confidence even more. So some of the things we hear from our poll workers, they get to meet new poll workers, perhaps other community members they didn't know already. There's sometimes downtimes on an election day, so they really have an opportunity to make some new friends. Um, and they like to see the process firsthand. It gives them a better understanding. So if they hear misinformation out there, they're able to tackle it by being hands-on at the polls. So we welcome interested community members from across the, the board, I know we're focusing on Vet the Vote today, and that's a great resource. I actually had an email this morning um, from an interested community member through Vet the Vote. So I'm very excited about that. It's already starting to roll out, and I hope you all will get the same kind of response. Um, and I ha although I haven't served in the military, um, both grandparents, both grandfathers, my father, my brother, and my son are all vets. And at this time, I'd like to, one of my favorite vets <laughs> in our community, um, my friend uh, Mike Morris, who is on our Board of Civil Authority, but also one of the most active members um, at our, as a poll worker. He uh, oftentimes is at the tabulator. I have great um, trust in his confidence there, educating our other poll workers at the tabulator, which is one of the most important places to be when you're a poll worker. So without further ado, this is Michael Morris from Hartford, one of our vets. I think everything's been said that needs to be said. But um, <laughs> one of the things I really enjoy about work at the polls is, like Lisa was saying, is the people you see that you don't see a lot of, and they're members of your community, they're your neighbors, they're friends, they're um, people you've worked with, and it's very enjoyable. But um, I hadn't voted until I was about 24 years old, and what happened was is the year before I got out of the service, I was sitting around lunchtime, and my platoon sergeant was talking, and I was complaining about what was going on in our country. And uh, Sergeant Miller looked at me and said, Sergeant Morris, he said, uh, so did you vote this last time? I said, what? He said, did you vote? And I said, no. He said, then you shut up. <laughs> and so um, when I got out of the service shortly after that, I registered and I started voting. And then later on in the years, I got involved with the town politics and uh, ran for select board. It took me a second try to get elected, but started getting involved in the polls and, and what goes on and the back, the back scenes that people don't know about and they don't understand. And I think if we got more people involved, more trust would be out there for everybody too. So um, I, it's one of the things I do enjoy doing. Like Lisa said, I, I like to show up early and be there and be involved and know it from beginning to end. So, but thank you all for your time. I know it's been a long, or is this the kickoff to your training? Uh, okay, you've had a long training, so I appreciate everybody's attention. I appreciate you listening while we took up your lunch. Uh, we have uh, some buttons and some little postcards that you can take back to your organization. And um, if you want to scan our QR code, if you want to contact us directly about ways, we have social media toolkits, we have different newsletters, we have uh, a number of tools that we could help you in your local jurisdictions. So please feel free to reach out anytime. And, and thank you again to the secretary and her whole office for putting this on. It was a great event and we appreciate it. Thank you all.